We are going to get started um, on our webinar on the wonders of Vietnam. Let me just say a couple of quick words about Wheel and Anchor, who we are. We are a community of travelers from all across Canada um, with a, a handful of folks from other countries that have uh, snuck in because they wanted so badly to travel with us. But we are predominantly Canadian organization. And our main mission is to bring people like you who are interested in travel or you many of our members are already very well traveled um and we all kind of have that canadian ap approach to travel we have a lot of fun along the way we are very uh respectful and and and, and um, cognizant um inquisitive about local culture traditions um we have a unique way of traveling and i really uh, this all came very real for me about five years ago, um, having organized trips for Canadians for over 30 years um, to all parts of the world. Uh, and I I just love traveling with Canadians. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And that's kind of what the reason, the raison d'etre of, uh, of Wheel and Anchor. And uh, in the course of all of that, of course, it's important to me that you become well-traveled and well-connected. Uh, the traveling part is uh, really up to us uh, because we put together, I put together, curate some very interesting... <laughs> and excuse me, uh, for some very interesting itineraries to all parts of the world. Um that uh, are designed in a way that sort of slows down the ordinary pace of travel that if you've traveled with uh, organized uh, trips before, um, they tend to be very busy and very fast paced. You need a holiday when you come home. We try to slow things down a bit um, so that we have time to enjoy the experience, to stop and smell the roses. And in doing so, you um, invariably get to know a place a lot better and you become connected to the people that you travel with and the people that you meet along the way. So that's our philosophy at Wheel and Anchor. I'll um, introduce myself and uh, at least um, the uh, uh, part of my team that you're likely to to, to meet if you uh, call uh, into our office. My name is Gordon. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor. Um, and as I mentioned, I've been organizing trips for over 30 years for Canadians to just to, to every continent in the world. Um, it's what I love to do. It's my life passion. Um, but of course, I couldn't uh, do all these uh, great trips without an amazing team, in particular Barb, um, who is joined with me, uh, has joined with me on the webinar today. Um, uh, one of our two trip specialists, along with Paula, who are there to answer your questions and uh, get you signed up for any trips that you're interested in. So today we're talking about Vietnam, our trip that is going to go up the coast, um, visiting some incredible cities, getting a great insight into this uh this fascinating country that has evolved so much. I first visited Vietnam. In fact, the last time I visited v Vietnam um, was in 1994, so 30 years ago. Uh, and um, uh, things have changed a lot in that span of time. And of course, in the 30 years prior to that, um, subsequent to the Vietnam War. So we'll, hear, we'll learn a lot about on our journey. Uh, so just to give you the geographic overview, we will start in Ho Chi Minh City down in the south, which is the most important commercial city of Vietnam, um, not the capital, which is, of course, Hanoi up in the north. Um, so we'll fly in and out of Ho Chi Minh. Um, we'll we'll uh, uh, spend a few days getting to know that city, uh, and then we'll head, head up into the cultural part, um, although that's arguable because they're all cultural, cultural hearts, um, where we're going to be seeing Hoi An, uh, Da Nang and Hue. Uh, Hue is the big university town in Vietnam. Uh, and then we'll make another leg up to Hanoi, uh, visiting the uh, the capital, which is it's the political capital of the country, a very different vibe than what you find down south. Uh, and then finally, the last couple of days, we're going to be out at um, Nin Bin. Uh, and so I note here, for those who are familiar with Vietnam, maybe you've looked at other trips to Vietnam and you say, how come we're not going to Halong Bay? So Halong Bay on the map is over here. Um, and uh, it is one of the places in the world that has suffered badly from um, really over tourism. I mean, it, the place is just jammed. It is uh, quite scenic and beautiful. Um, however, the reason that we cho cho chose to go to Ninh Binh is because it has basically the same geographic formations that you find uh, in sorry, the geological formations that you find in Halong Bay, um, but in an inland, like in a, a, a lake setting, 
uh, and with a fraction of the tourists that you find. So you still get that amazing experience without the, um, as I say, the over tourism of Halong Bay. So I just wanted to note that from the beginning, the, the logic behind the um, how we've organized the trip. So um, I'll cover off some of the day by day parts of it, as I say, we'll, we'll arrive into Ho Chi Minh on the 15th of November. Now, for those that are, uh, are interested in our mighty Mekong trip that combines Cambodia and Vietnam, it happens immediately before. So these two trips are back to back. Um, and so if you are doing the mighty Mekong, I described already the first day that you'll have in Ho Chi Minh and the days will overlap. Um, for those coming in on the first day, uh, we won't have too much program because you'll have had a long trip um, traveling from Canada. Um, so once you get in, you'll you'll have sort of the balance of the day to sort of relax and get a little bit caught up on your jet lag. Uh, and then we will delve into uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, in, uh, in, in all its glory on the first full day. And so, um, and, and just, just to see, you, you get a sense now because I, a lot of people have a, a picture of Vietnam, um, you know, of the sampans and the mangroves and the rivers and, you know, all the tropical sort of, uh, rural countryside. But of course the cities here are as vibrant as any place in Southeast Asia. And you can see the, the, the business district of Ho Chi Minh here with all the skyscrapers that kind of make ours even look small by comparison. It's really, really amazing. Um, and so we'll catch a glimpse of that, but we're really here to explore um, the ancient part of Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, as it was known, uh, of course, uh, until um, about uh, until just after the time of the uh, Vietnam War. Um, and so um, we'll we'll start of obviously the first day by uh, visiting some of the most important sites of Ho Chi Minh City. Um, in particular, like you can see here, this very funny colored uh, temple called Chao Dai. Uh, but we'll also uh, um, stop in and see the uh, the reunification the the uh, reunification palace, um, which used to be called the Presidential Palace, but um, was very significant because it, of the role that it played. Um, at the end of uh, the Vietnam War when Saigon fell and, and, and ultimately led up to the end of the war. Um, and so, <clears throat> and as I mentioned here, you'll notice quite a difference between um, uh, Saigon, between Ho Chi Minh in the South, which is very uh, vibrant, very entrepreneurial, very liberal, um, as compared to when we get up to Hanoi in the North, which is much more conservative. So if you, you know, you compare often a capital city as compared to the you know the commercial or the economic hub of a country and how different they can be and it's certainly no different here in uh in in Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam um we'll have we'll um uh have some great lunches along the way uh and we're going to be uh uh visiting as well Cholon, uh, which is a, a huge market um where it's a, a Chinese oriented market so you'll find a lot of influence from Chinese communities community here. Um, you'll see the typical um, uh, 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 pagodas and, and Chinese script. So it's almost like the, the Chinatown, if you will, of Vietnam. China, of course, has a lot of influence um, on the country as it's evolved economically over the years. Um, and uh, we'll also visit a couple of other um, uh, temples along the way. And uh, it'll give you a great flavor uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Ho Chi Minh itself and some of the history. Um, we will uh, uh, also visit the Coach Coochie Tunnels. And for those who participated in the last webinar, I mentioned that. So again, this is where the trips overlap. So at Coochie, um, these are the tunnels that were dug by the Viet Cong uh, during the Vietnam War as a way to evade uh, the uh, the invaders, the, uh, the American soldiers that were there. And it's a massive complex. We're going to see only um, one part of one of the tunnel complexes called Ben Duoc, um, which is in total over 100 hectares in size um, and is a multi-layered system of tunnels and rooms um, all underground uh, where uh, the Vietnamese sort of held out and, and were able to um, successfully uh, conduct their resistance mission in during the war. So um, the history of it is really phenomenal. Um, and and you, we can climb into the tunnels in the rooms. The ones at the top level, as I recall, are tall enough, like you see here, where, where us Westerners can sort of stand up inside. Some of the our taller, taller folk may have to bend over a little bit. Um, 
And as you go down in the tunnel system, they get smaller and smaller and more compact, and you practically have to crawl through. Um, in fact, uh, uh, some some you know larger folks would even have trouble. We're not going to go through that, of course, but we'll get to see these different layers of uh, of tunnels and so on. And uh, it, the only thing I would say is, is that, uh, and I remember when I visited these tunnels. Uh, and there was a claustrophobic person in the in the group ahead of us, and uh, they didn't have a lot of fun. Let's put it that way. But apart from that, it's uh, it's 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 a highlight, uh, and it's a must see uh, in um, in uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, in the evening, we'll have our uh, first uh, welcome dinner, which will also serve as a farewell dinner for those who uh, are just doing the Mekong River program and heading back to Canada. So it'll be a, a grand celebration, if you will. And we're going to be hitting up um, Lang Restaurant, which is quite a famous uh, um, uh, vegetarian friendly. But of course, they also have uh, meat dishes as well. But you're going to get a great introduction to Vietnamese cuisine. Um, the uh, the uh, main chef is quite a famous one um, at this restaurant, uh, and it's 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 a fantastic, it's an absolutely sublime spot, um, and a good place for our first of many fantastic meals as we um, go around Vietnam. We're going to take a whole day at leisure in Vietnam, in in Ho Chi Minh, I should say, um, and uh, it's important to us on all of our trips that we allow time for folks to um, adventure out on their own. And while Ho Chi Minh can be daunting in terms of, you know, the traffic, the hustle bustle, it's quite a lively place, but it's a very safe city. And there's lots of things that you can do on your own. Um, if you're somebody that's interested in, for example, um, the Vietnam War and all the history around that, they have a fantastic um, war remnants museum where you can see um, you know, weapons and and what's left of uh, tanks and planes and all the rest of it. Uh, it's really quite amazing. You can see this sort of the, the picture of it here. But I know a lot of our members love to shop um, and love to visit the various markets. And so one of them where we'll probably head over to is called Andong, uh, which is a very, very local market. Uh, again, influenced by the Chinese. Um, and you'll find everything here from you know, very uh, authentic handicrafts made by local craftsmen. But you can also find all of the, uh, the you know, the fake, uh, the knockoff brands that uh, you can get in, in Hong Kong. So there's a there's something for everybody uh, at a market like that. But lots of other things to do. Um, personally, when I'm in a city like Ho Chi Minh, I just like to wander the streets and uh, see what kind of neighborhoods I end up in and get a sense of local flavor and life. And that's 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 the best thing I think that you can do on a um, uh, on a free day. The following day, we'll uh, head out to the airport again and fly up to uh, Da Nang. Uh, and Da Nang, in the meantime, has become quite a popular uh, beach destination in, in Vietnam. Uh, and so there's a, a lot of massive hotels along the beach. So we're actually not going to spend a, a tremendous amount of time, but rather we're going to drive down to Hoi An um, because Hoi An is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, as you can see in the caption here, it's known as the, the City of Lanterns. And uh, here we will uh, take a walking tour around, uh, visiting some museums, some little temples. Um, and it's a totally different feel to Ho Chi Minh because, you know, as you can see from the buildings here, um, they haven't, it hasn't been, um, it hasn't succumbed to the development as the larger cities in, uh, in Vietnam. Uh, there's a, a beautiful little bridge a Japanese covered bridge that we're going to hit up. Uh, and on the other side of it, we'll get uh, to visit the home of a, a gentleman that makes silk lanterns. Uh, and so anytime we can get, you know, these very special experiences, we try to seize on them. There'll probably be others that we don't even know that we that that we can do until we get there. But we've um, made an extra effort to include these kind of experiences along the way. And um, yeah, Hoi An is a lovely spot to do that. I have very fond memories um, here. Um, we we will venture out the next day from Hoi An to uh, Tra Quê, uh, which is uh, a lovely little uh, village not far that has a, a market that is just packed with uh, all kinds of organic gardens, herbs, spices, vegetables, and all the rest of it. Um, and this is a part of the trip that I like because for those that wish, and you don't have to, we have a different option, but we'll don bicycles. Um, and I remember during my first trip to Vietnam, uh, as I mentioned, which was uh, 1994, so uh, almost 30 years ago, um, it will be 30 years ago by next year when we go. Um, 
and uh, we'll we'll don a bicycle. Back then, everybody was uh, riding bicycles. There was hardly motor motor vehicles to be found, and that's only thirty years ago. These days, it's changed quite a bit, but bicycles still important mode of transportation, particularly in these smaller communities. Uh, and uh, so if you don't want to take a bike, we're not going to go far, about six, seven kilometers, and we're going to drive along uh, the river and, uh, you know, really get a flavor of the local, uh, the local community, watching all of the Vietnamese farmers with their gardens. Um, we're going to visit some uh, communal houses uh, where they, they act as like chapels or temples where they can um, worship their gods and their patron saints and so on and so forth. Um, and then we'll head find, end up at Bale Market, um, which is uh, a non-touristy market. Uh, so uh, again, this is the point of trying to get off the beaten track into the rural part and experience what life is like and how, what people buy and what, what is sold in, in these very, very rural markets. Um, and the highlight of, I think, of the day, well, it's all highlights because as I say, driving around on a, on, a, on a bicycle or for those that don't wish to, will provide either a tuk-tuk um, or uh, another appropriate form of transportation. Um, but we'll end up um, at a cooking school along the river on the Tubon River. Uh, and so some of the ingredients that we will have um, seen in the markets during the day, you'll also get a chance to pick them up. Um, and we, we're going to go and prepare some Vietnamese dishes um, and uh, that will end up with uh, with a fantastic meal at the end. So um, it's going to be a very, very special day. I love cooking classes because, you know, first of all, it's a lot of fun. Uh, a good way to connect with your fellow travelers, but also to get some insight into the, um, you know, the local uh, cuisine that they that they have there. We'll have another day at leisure in uh, Hoi An, and uh, you can see by uh, the the pictures here a little bit of the vibe of the place. It's all low scale. It's like a it's it's a it's a city, but it's like a, it's more like a town. So you can uh, wander around. You can go out for a little sampan ride. Um, you can uh, uh, lounge around in the markets. Uh, it's uh, it's fantastic. And then in the evening, uh, we're going to go out to Tok, uh, which is uh, in out amongst the rice fields of, of Vietnam. And uh, we're going to uh, hang out there and have a fine dining experience um, that will be, again, one of these things that you really, really remember. And so keep in mind, we like to try and handpick the uh, restaurants that we eat at. Um, if I had my way, I would eat at a restaurant where there were no other tourists. Of course, that's almost uh, not possible these days. But we do like to find um, places that offer a, a great experience of, of local cuisine and fresh food and so on. And that's something that we'll experience this day. Um, we'll then, then continue up to Hue. Um, and what I remember particularly about the drive from Hoi An to Hue is we pass over um, the Pass of the Cloud. So it's a, a windy world that goes up into the mountains. Um, and then on the way down, we end up in Hue, which is a uh, university town um, and has a, a tremendous history from the uh, from the uh, Cham Empire. So back in the 14th century, um, when you know there's been ongoing conflicts in Vietnam over the uh, over the centuries, um, and so we'll get a chance to understand a little bit about um, the Cham, the, the so-called Nguyen Dynasty, uh, which uh, was in place back uh, until as recently as uh, the mid 1940s. Um, and so Hue was um, established as kind of the uh, educational, the intellectual capital of Vietnam. Um, and still today, uh, they have um, 12 higher education schools, universities, and so on. So it's a youthful town. This is where a lot of the Vietnamese uh, young people come to study. Um, and uh, it, But it, as I say, at the same time, it has some, some remarkable um, uh, places to visit some remarkable temples like you see here. There is a, a citadel that was built uh, in the inspiration of the imperial city in, uh, sorry, excuse me, the, the forbidden city in Beijing um, that has a, uh, a huge uh, outer enclosure and a moat. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, fantastic. And, and this is a, 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 a a shot here in the picture of, of one of those. Um, so lots to see this day in Hue. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, there's some, some some other interesting things in store for you here. Um, we'll have one more day in Hue 
uh, where we will, oops, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit too fast, um, where we're going to visit the uh, the Tuhu Pagoda, among other things, um, which is uh, one of the most significant part of um, uh, Buddhist education that you'll find in the country. Vietnam, of course, primarily uh, Buddhist religion with um, some exceptions. Uh, and so we will get uh, not only to see these pagodas, but also a little bit of an insight into the under and into what uh, the Buddhist faith is all about. And it's been interesting just in the travels that I've done in the course of putting these trips together over the last few years, my understanding of what Buddhism is, because it's it's not actually a religion, but rather a practice or a faith. Uh, and what that all means and how people live by that is really, really quite fascinating because it's quite a departure from uh, our sort of traditional or westernized views of religion. Anyway, I won't go into all of that in, in any more detail, um, but uh, we're uh, going to do another little, uh, we have another opportunity to do a little touring around by bicycle today. Um, where we'll stop at a village called Tu Tuibu on the river, uh, and uh, they make a, a rice wine there. That is a you know, it's a, not exactly. It's a bit of an acquired taste, um, but nevertheless, uh, I, I'm I'm one of those folks. I like to try everything once, um, even if you spit it out five minutes later. But um, it's not that bad actually. But the uh, the local rice wine is really good. They make a number of other um, uh, interesting products there. That uh, and we'll uh, head back. Um, after a lovely day, um, without without too late in the afternoon, we'll take a trip down the Perfume River, which is the river that uh, flows through Hue uh, for a nice little boat ride to cap off the day. Um, and then you'll have a quiet evening on your own to uh, either go out and sample some of the street food of Vietnam or uh, or to just sort of relax around the hotel. Um, we then fly up to Hanoi, uh, which, of course, is the capital of Vietnam. And as it says here, the Paris of the East. Uh, and so the 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 city here again is it's a big city, but at the same time it has a very different dynamic than what you'll find down in uh, Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and so we uh, among things that we'll do here, uh, we are staying in the French Quarter. So as I mentioned from the, at the beginning, uh, Vietnam was colonized by the French and still has a lot of French influence. You'll see it in the architecture. You'll see it in the cuisine. Um, French is still spoken not so much by the younger generation who obviously tend towards English, but from the older generation, there's still French spoken um, signs in French. It's really quite remarkable. I was taken quite taken aback by the influence, the the, the enduring influence of, of the French uh, here in Vietnam. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll stop and see a um, ethnology museum that will help explain a little bit bit about the ethnic history of Vietnam. Um, because, you know, of course, we come to these countries, and you always think, oh, Vietnamese, it's like all, um, all sort of one. But of course, there's the, the Vietnam is an evolution of so many different ethnic groups that came out of the mountains that are further to the west, um, not to mention those that came down from China to the north, um, and, and sort of from all over. So um, we'll learn a little bit about that. But my favorite part um, of Hanoi is the water puppets. And so um, we, you may think we're too old for puppet shows, but uh, I don't think you're ever too too old for a puppet show. But um, the water puppetry is a very unique art that they practice in Vietnam because um, the, uh, the the stage is like a pool of water, uh, and the the guys, the puppeteers, are actually standing in, in the water, hidden by a screen, and it looks like the characters are uh, are are kind of dancing on the water. It's really really cool. It's very well done. Uh, it's and it's a lot of fun and it's just uh, something that you 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 really miss something if you didn't take it in while you're while you're in Vietnam. Um, we'll uh, spend another day uh, visiting Hanoi. Um, as you can see, the old quarter here. Um, I, my my sense of Hanoi, and again, it's been quite some years since I've been there, but is it it doesn't have that uh, hustle bustle business like thing that uh, Ho Chi Minh does. It's all of it is a little bit more chill, but the Old Quarter in particular uh, has uh, a number of wonderful monuments. Um, in particular, we have to visit the Ho Chi Minh Museum. I mean, Ho Chi Minh, I'm not going to get into it now, obviously is considered the father of Vietnam. Uh, and uh, the, this particular museum looks at uh, the last thousand years of Vietnamese history and everything that uh, it took for them to actually achieve independence because of course they were occupied by everybody else for so long, the last ones being uh, the French 
uh, and uh, and uh, it took them yeah a thousand years to actually achieve their own independence. Um, and so there's some other cool stops that we'll see, um, yeah, particularly in the old quarter, which is an area called 36 streets, and they've got all kinds of uh, uh, streets. And and what's interesting is is that all of the little shops will often congregate together in the same areas. You've got Bamboo Street and Paper Street and Tin Street, uh, and you'll find on each of these streets that kind of merchandise. So if you happen to be shopping for a little souvenir to take home, you you can you know know by the street the kind of thing that you'll find along the way there. That's It's kind of a, a neat thing. Um, once again, we'll take a, a free day in Hanoi. And I emphasize again that on our free days, um, the idea is, is that um, a lot of members will uh, will uh, decide with the host uh, to go and do something together. Some people will venture off on their own. Um, I'm a big advocate that we encourage you to do some, you know, research and figure out the type of things that you uh, might interest you. Uh, there, for example, in Hanoi, there's an amazing temporal of li literature that uh, uh, takes into account the philosopher Confucius. Um, and of course, you know, many of you will know the role that Confucius played in terms terms of uh, the philosophies and the 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 um, um, uh, well the, the 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 quotes from Confucius that really guide a lot of Asian society and so uh, this this particular temple is uh, a very cool spot um, it's got a thousand year old bell inside um, but there's also Train Street uh, and for those who joined me in Thailand before, uh, you have a, a train that runs uh, down a very, very narrow street with markets left and right. Um, and so when the train uh, is not there, you can walk down and, 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 and have a look inside all these different cafes and shops. And then, uh, and then when the train actually comes, everybody's sort of pulling back their awnings and taking their wares away from the tracks and the train passes through and then, you know, life returns to normal again. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's an easy thing to do and of course uh, there's also lots of um, tasting to do in Vietnam they have fantastic street food markets um, it is uh, I think Vietnam is maybe even trumps a uh, Thailand in terms of the uh, the quality of street food that you can get there it is amazing um, and so you could literally spend the day just sampling from all the different vendors all the different food so no shortage of things to do and uh, so it's a nice way before we do the last leg of our trip uh, to enjoy a free day in Hanoi. Uh, and this is when we're going to head down to Ninh Binh. And so, uh, again, for those of you who have maybe seen pictures of uh, of Halong Bay, um, this is, as the caption says, it's Halong Bay on land. Uh, so we're going to head not far, but an hour and a half outside of, uh, of Hanoi to uh, an area called... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, to Trang An, uh, which was recently designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is an incredible example of uh, this geology that you can, that we'll get a chance to go on a rowing boat on a, they call it a sampan uh, locally, and we'll travel around the rivers and take in this incredible landscape. Like, um, I, I tell you, you're going to take a hundred pictures on, on, or a thousand pictures on your, on your phone because it's so, so picturesque. And again, what I really like about it is that it's not nearly, there are tourists there. I mean, you can't avoid them entirely, but um, compared to Halong Bay, which is, I just had friends return from there uh, earlier in the summer and they said it was an absolute zoo, um, which unfortunately detracts from the experience. So by visiting uh, Ninh Binh, we will uh, really get a sense of this very same, it's the same geological formation that carries from the sea in, inland, um, but uh, do it in a very uh, sort of relaxed manner. So we have two nights here in Ninh Binh when we'll get to see the all of the beautiful nature that there is there, but also um, the one of the largest uh, pagodas in uh, on the whole continent of Asia called Bai Din. And so this picture, you, you need a super wide angle lens just to get a sense of the scale of this massive, massive um, pagoda. The overall comp complex is 540 hectares. So if you, you could sort of, you know, get through that in your mind, I mean, it is absolutely gigantic. Um, there's a huge Buddha statue inside um, made out of bronze. Uh, and uh, of course, everything in gilded gold. It is really amazing. Um, you know, you, you can't visit Asia without seeing quite a number of temples and pagodas and so on. Um, but as I always say, there's there's pagodas and then there's like, you know, the mother of all pagodas. And this is certainly uh, one of it. 
Um, and so uh, uh, we'll explore for the, the whole day, uh, or, or I should say for the whole morning, uh, this uh, this wonderful complex of Baidin. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we'll have a chance actually to visit a church that was built again during the European uh, uh, con colonization times back in the late 19th century. Uh, and uh, they uh, it was destroyed a bit during the Vietnam War, but they've uh, um, restored most of it. Uh, and now it is uh, an incredible cathedral. Um, and uh, depending on when we arrive there, uh, we will uh, perhaps have the chance to uh, see a, a mass in progress. And it's uh, again, it's a it's a huge uh, complex and and one that uh, yeah, it's 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 a bit of an anomaly to see a cathedral, a French cathedral, in the middle of Vietnam. But by this point, we'll have seen a number of different French influences, which. Um, kind of makes it neat. So on our way back uh, to uh, Hanoi, uh, we'll make one more stop at a super, super photogenic um, um, pagoda called Bich Dong uh, that is uh, not far from Ninh Binh. And so we'll we'll stop there for those that are uh, uh, um, um, ambitious enough. We can get walk up 100 steps to get to the top of the mountain uh, to see the uh, the main pagoda itself. Uh, and uh, again, this lovely countryside with all these rock formations covered in in uh, green vegetation. It's really, really, um, it's really remarkable. So it'll be a nice last day before we head into Hanoi. Uh, and here in Hanoi will be our last night before we have to make our way home. Uh, so we'll, we'll um, we, we've uh, um, organized a great fare, farewell dinner. Um, our group that's heading there this year is going to be sampling that. Uh, and so uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure that it's the, the best possible experience for those who choose to join us next year. And that'll be our trip across Vietnam. I think it's a, a great program in and of itself. Um, two, a good two weeks in duration. Uh, and uh, you'll fly home then or continue on to somewhere else in Asia uh, from Hanoi. Uh, and uh, as I say, it's a uh, it's a great trip and a great to do in combination with the Mekong or or just on its own or perhaps um, continuing on somewhere else in Asia. I think November is a great time to go um, because the weather is uh, still quite favorable uh, and it, it uh, in the winter time it can get quite chilly in northern Vietnam, but November is still just just about right. Um, so all of the details, all of our logistics, of course, in our program uh, itinerary that if you have not already seen, we will send you a copy with a, a replay of this webinar. Um, but here to give you the prices, everything Canadian dollars, of course, um, you see them in double and single. So we do have single rooms available. If you sign up before the end of November, we do have a couple of hundred bucks off uh, that we can offer you uh, towards the program. So that um, is always helpful. And uh, thankfully, our hotel partners that give us a bit of a break if we get our deposits in early on. Um, and if you are doing, um, uh, if you're doing this in combination with the Mighty Mekong, we have a special price because we do have an overlap of a couple of days in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, not to mention that uh, uh, obviously two in one is uh, uh, easier for us a little bit. So we give you a bit of a good deal, uh, about a thousand bucks off if you um, join us for both the Mighty Mekong and the Vietnam program. So again, all the details in the program itinerary and of course um, our um, uh, sorry, this is the early bird pricing for the Mighty Mekong. So if you uh, if you sign up before the end of November, it's uh, uh, a couple of hundred bucks more if you uh, if you uh, join us later on after the 1st of December for this program. So that's what that's all about. In terms of uh, inclusions, um, of course, we have wonderful hotels handpicked uh, throughout the trip. Um, we also include the domestic flights. So between Ho Chi Minh and Da Nang, as well as from way up to Hanoi, um, 15 nights accommodation. And then um, generally speaking, we have either a lunch or a dinner every day, with the exception of the free days where we kind of leave you out on your own um, to sample the local cuisine. But pretty much everything else is included, including gratuities. Uh, for all the services while you're together with our group. Um, so that's that. Uh, of course, airfare and trip cancellation insurance, we're happy to quote you on, uh, or, or you're welcome to arrange those for yourself if you wish. Um, as I mentioned in the pre previous webinar, our flights across the Pacific have gone up um, since the onset of the conflict in Ukraine. 
um, as a result of the fact that um, North American carriers are not allowed to fly over Russia. Um, so that means that they, a lot of the routes have been cut between North America and Asia, and that has had an impact on prices. So airfares are a little bit higher than they were, well, a little bit, they're 50%, let's be blunt, higher than they were before uh, this uh, Ukraine madness started off. So that gives you a sense of what you can expect for airfare. We're hoping maybe that the capacity will return and prices will come down, but just uh, just to manage expectations, that's what we're looking at. So um, good, now it's time to take some questions uh, before we wrap up our webinar. So Barb, do we have any uh, member questions? Yes, we do. Um, somebody's asking if there's somebody going as a solo traveler um, on days which are free days, is there something where the all the solo travelers can go sort of with the leader? Um, yeah, for sure. So what typically happens on free days is that the host will, um, you know, mention something the day prior and say, hey, you know, tomorrow, does anybody want to join? And, you know, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go there. Um, we, again, because of the nature of Wheel and Anchor and, and the fact that we're a community and we really foster sort of people to connect with one another, um, we make sure that somebody's always got somebody else to connect with, other other folks to, um, to, uh, to join along with. And our host will um, sort of get a sense of where the majority want to go and we'll uh, go out with our solo travelers or whoever um, to explore some of the, the cities uh, and towns on the free days. Okay, perfect. Um, and I know you covered the visa uh, information in the last one, but if people are just doing yep. this, one, do you want to go over that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, v Vietnam is a relatively simple e-visa that you can get online. There's a website you go to, um, uh, and uh, for most people, it takes about 10 minutes to uh, to get your e-visa e online. It's uh, it's not that difficult. Um, and we provide the links to that in our additional information document. Okay. And you mentioned the weather's quite good. Do you know approximate temperatures for that? Yeah. Time? So in the south, it's more tropical in the south. There's quite a difference in the climate between southern and northern Vietnam. So you can expect in the south that the weather is going to be quite warm, probably in the high 20s, maybe even low 30s. Yeah, probably high 20s in, in uh, late November. Um, in the north, the temperature will probably be mm, six, seven, eight degrees cooler. I don't like to make too many representations about weather because it seems to be crazy all over the world. Um, but yeah, you can expect temperatures in the high 20s in the north and probably in, you know, the low 20s, high teens, even as much as 10 degrees cooler. Uh, in the northern part of the trip, and at night it's it's cooler. So um, you may find that in Ninh Binh, for example, that uh, during the day it may be uh, sort of 21, 20, 22, um, and in the evening it could drop down to sort of 14, 15. It's perfect traveling weather, um, and uh, but it's uh, I wouldn't call it necessarily beach weather. But this isn't really a beach trip anyway. Okay, perfect. Those are the questions that have come in. So um, people can always um, reach out to Paula and myself if they have additional questions. And um, yeah, each of these trips have an additional information document. And that goes over a lot of comprehensive information on the specific trip. So um, if you're interested, let us know and we can get that document out to you. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, we try to put as much information there as possible. But otherwise, um, yeah, if you, if you have a question that you can't find the answer or two in our documentation obviously paula and barbara there to uh help out and of course if they can't find the answer to the question then uh they will uh uh reach out to myself or to one of our other team and we'll uh, at the end of the day we'll make sure that you get your questions answered um so before we wrap up uh barb stuck in the chat box here in case you're interested in france our next webinar will be next tuesday the 10th of october at 11 o'clock eastern time um, and that is about the Canal du Midi. Um, that's our fall trip to the Canal du Midi. We're also going there in spring. That is a canal that links the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean in southern France. So uh, if you've ever thought about taking a, a houseboat through towns and villages through France, um, this is the way to do it. We had a blast last year on the Canal du Midi. So I'm sure we will have the same again next year. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope that uh, you found this informative. I do hope you'll consider joining us to Vietnam next year. Um, we have a great group going this year, um, and uh, we will undoubtedly repeat it. And if anything, make it even better next year, because that's how we work. We're always striving to make the best experience possible for our members. So thank you so much for joining us. 
Um, I appreciate the time today, particularly those of you who endured two back-to-back -back webinars. Um, that's much appreciated. And uh, we'll see you all again very soon on an upcoming webinar or hopefully on an upcoming trip. Take care. Have yourselves a good rest of the day.